Welcome to the end of the current journey of Final Fantasy XIV, your first day, where our final bits of journey lead us into a dead end. Last time, we took a break from battle to cover the gathering and crafting of Shadowbringers, and the wider idea of endgame progression for those roles. This time, we'll do the same for the battle content of Shadowbringers, as well as an exhaustive look at endgame progression of an expansion. Expect a lot of numbers, but I'll break it down now. Upon completion of the 5.0 story, Tatara will annoy you like always and give you a few messages about trusts and job quests. Let's start with that trust spit. First, something I forgot to mention last episode is that trust can't raise you. If you die, you instantly return to the start of a dungeon, even if the healer trust is alive. And Alice sure won't help you either. We also have lost the ability to play trusts in scenario mode for the moment. We now have a leveling system in place. Run through dungeons, kill the bosses at the end, and your own EXP amounts, then check the trust window again. Everyone who went into the dungeon with you will have gained massive amounts of EXP. And as of patch 5.58, the one that just came out, this amount has been increased, so what you see in this clip will actually be higher in patch 5.58. So now you have to level everyone back up to 80. There's a number of rewards if you do. For one, getting everyone to level 80 will re-unlock scenario mode to play at your leisure. Secondly, everyone will regain their own uniforms from previous expansions. You can now run dungeons with 3.0 Thancred for example, just right click to select the glamour. This does not carry over into scenario mode though. Scenario mode forces everyone into their Shadowbringers outfits. This is a worthwhile thing to invest in personally, and who knows if you'll need to grind trust through Shadowbringers to be able to use them in Endwalker's avatar mode. Scenario mode should be fine without it, so decide now if you will invest too. The second thing Tataru bothered to annoy us with is the fact that we do have level 80 quests for our jobs, but they are not job quests as far as they were in previous expansions. It does not appear on the main scenario guide, and isn't blue because it's not an unlock quest. You'll get some more lore about the job, but that's about it. I highly recommend the summoner one though, as that one has some main story implications. Speaking of story though, is the Craft and Gatherer episode I mentioned we need some story progress to get all the relevant unlocks. So let's take a break to talk about progressing through that. The first new dungeon we get is the Grand Cosmos. Now while our trust menu won't let us do high level dungeons with them, if we talk to the trust NPCs at the dungeon entrance, we will be allowed back into scenario mode just fine. But also you'll see we're already behind in gear levels. We need to go farm some gear to continue, with tomes, buy it on the market, whatever. We'll cover the gear curve later, just get whatever Everyone. gear you need to continue on. Either way, queue in with players Everyone. or your trusts Victory and head on in. Now unlike leveling dungeons, even trusts can handle big pools in level 80 dungeons. This just goes to show how easy max level big pooling is. I'm only I-436, six I levels above the minimum, and I take little to no damage in this clip. Trust damage is still absolute garbage though, and no AoE, but also they can heal me through walls apparently. Now, gear from these 80 dungeons is very useful for slow progression if you're not skipping all the way to current patch item levels. 445 is actually a huge amount increase over the minimum 430 you need. Plus, you're getting tomes for those current patch gears. After the dungeon, it will be placed into the same menu as all the other trust runs. You have to level trust to 80 to run it again with trusts and all main story dungeons are like this. Then we finally hit the end of 5.1 and the point I pointed out last video. 
Kai Shear is now available for his custom delivery turn-in. After completion of 5.1, Tatara will have some flavor text that is more than just flavor. She will tell us to go check on Flamin. And if we head outside into Revenant's Toll, there is actually a level 80 quest for us to talk to her for. No unlock from it, but worth it for the story. Early into the next patch, 5.2, we'll be warned of our next side story, The Sorrow of Wellet, The Weapons Line of Trials. I'll talk about this later too. As we go on, we'll get more 80 dungeons, boost up our eye level, and need minimum item level of 490 to complete the Shadowbringers expansion story. That is the bare minimum. We'll talk about the roulettes unlocked by this later too. First though, let's talk about a bunch of miscellaneous unlocks. The first ones are back in the Crystarium. Our level 80 hunts, B ranks, are still worth killing, and especially so since hunts are actually used in the path to maximum eye levels. If your data center does hunt trains, better get in on those too if you want quick upgrades. Nearby the entrance to Lakeland is the next iteration of Yoshi P in the world. He will be the man we visit for every extreme unlock for trials that take place on the first. In addition to the three we did in the 5.0 story, we'll have to return to him after 5.3's trial for one final extreme unlock on the first. Now on to Yomor, we have our next iteration of Stone Sky C, The Lawn. Watch for dog droppings as you practice your level 80 rotations against dummies of every trial, raid, and others to see if your damage is up to snuff. Another quest in Yomor we'll talk about later is tangentially related to the special world boss Archeotonia. Every expansion has some and Shadowbringers has two. Archeotonia is this unrevealed portion of the Tempest on a suspicious square platform and formidable over in Kalusha. See the mob of players all close to max item level and how slow it is dying? and how much damage they are still taking even at those levels? Like always, not simple to beat. Their item exchanges are in Yomor, the mounts, and a frog suit. I might have skipped over mentioning these entirely, if not for the fact that I expect a lot of people want to know about the frog suit from Archeotonia. Now for a weird interaction, first off, doing all four role quests will unlock a fifth and final quest line. Ciela will have something for you after completion of all the role quests. However, if you did that fifth quest line and finish everything from Unokali, I still have no idea how to pronounce his name, another quest line called Void Quests will unlock. There's no major rewards to get from these, but again, worth doing eventually for the story. Now this next one may end up being increased to 90 come Endwalker. We have the Faux Hollows and Unreal Trials. This Amaric looking fox has a new minigame attached to Extreme Trials. Unreal Trials change per patch and are a remade version of old trials. For example, we currently have Leviathan Unreal. If you went and did minimum eye level no echo leviathan at level 50, it would still likely be easier than when it originally was created due to power creep. The DPS checks would be more lenient. Meanwhile, on real trials keep a low minimum item level so everyone at 80 can get in and a low maximum item level so that you can't outgear it. You essentially have to minimum eye level unreal trials. There is no other choice. The fox also has some rewards worth going for, including a Paisa ring, and some items shared from Chloe's stock. Now let's talk about a major piece of new content that is also very useful for the Shadowbringers level 80 gear curve. Before you can do it, you must complete the entire Return to Ivalice Alliance Raid series in Stormblood. And then we can go into Bogia, 
the Eureka of Shadowbringers. The hub area of Gongos is reached from the Domen Enclave. It's a lengthy storyline, but after completion of a few quests, you'll unlock a teleport straight to Gongos from the Domen Aetherite. Also unlocked from this content is an extreme fight, Memoria Miseria Extreme. This is where you get Diable Artifact Armor. That aside, continue the quest by talking to Geralt and get your first Resistance Weapon Relic. It is item level 485, which from a below 430 state you finish Shadowbringers at, this is a huge upgrade to your stats and item level. But the main host of the content is from the next quest, and the continuation of the Relic quest as well comes from this quest. The Stressed Soldier will have the next Relic quest, while Where Eagle's Nest will take us into the Bojian Southern Front. This is required for the Relic. Amazing content, and apparently really good EXP for jobs level 71 and up. That's right, my Samurai, which is not level 80, synced up to level 80 while inside of Bojia. As is my Dragoon. Put your Shadowbringer skill set on, and you can practice the job and level it up at the same time. The EXP isn't anything to write home about in itself, but you're also progressing through Bogia at the same time. 700k is a lot of EXP for doing something else besides pure grinding. Also, if you do this on level 80, this is a good way to grind out tombstones too. Also, notice I gained 100 metal or Bogia EXP in the first clip. Patch 5.58 buffed EXP rates. I now get 200. I assume that the Bojian Southern Front now has a 2 times multiplier for ranks 1 through 14. I don't know what the actual buff is, because all it says in the patch notes is that there was a buff. Next in the gearing keys, we have two optional dungeons. These were there to fill out the 5.0 endgame before more patches added more dungeons and content. We have in the Crystarium, near the Aetherite, by the time you hear this for the Twinning. You may know this dungeon as that one with the really funky music. Meanwhile over in Yomor is Academia Anadir. We'll return to Amarat for a bit of world building and showing that trusts cannot be used in these. Even if you have trusts leveled to 80, you cannot use them in these dungeons. You must normally queue for them as they are side dungeons, but they're not too difficult. Also, Anadir is the dungeon that explains where the world boss Archeotonia comes from. Let's talk about a bit more of the weapon trials. In 5.2, the side quest appeared in the Alamegan Quarter, and we have to team up with Gaius to stop these awful new weapons in their tracks. But we'll need to gain a good number of item levels first. Even Ruby Weapon has a high minimum, but it did release when the max item level was increased to 500. There are three trials in the line, and after each one, there is this fanatic in the locks. They will give you the extreme fights for each of the weapons. And then the totems from those extreme fights are to be brought to Mordona for the turn-ins, like with Memoria and the Diable Artifact gear. Now let's get into talking about the raids. Our 8-man raids were teased to us in the finale scenes to 5.0. We'll be heading deep into the empty, beyond the stopped wave of light for a battle with Eden. Eden's Gate, Verse, and Promise raids, each with increasingly higher eye levels. I do recommend doing these raids like always, but especially because it ties a bit into the story. But it is also a very good way of increasing your item level. Go to Yulmore with the drops from every fight to turn them in for gear. And the final fight of each tier will drop special blades of antiquity, very, very important for buying tombstone weapons. Also, Eden for Savage has an attached ultimate fight unlock, the Epic of Alexander Ultimate. Now let's move on to our 24-man raids. Remember word about Komra? Now that the light is defeated, we have a scandal in Komra. This will lead us into the Near Automata raid series, and yes, this is permanent. This is a crossover, not an event. 
but also we need to get some gear to enter and also use the gear and drops from inside to progress our level further. As usual, three raids, harder as you go along. Don't forget you have Alliance Roulette for a potential two birds, one stone situation. But speaking of that, now that we've covered all of the actual content, let's get into the actual grind. Getting the tombstones for current gear is a lot more grindy than Poetics. You're going to need to put in a lot more effort. There's also four tomes per expansion. Your tome window will show you three of them typically. An uncapped tome like Poetics first. These are allegory at the moment. The second is our capped tome. The cap is how many tomes you can get per week. This resets to zero every Tuesday. Cap is normally 450 tomes, but they double the cap when the expansion ends. And the third is the most recently discontinued tome. The fourth tome is no longer in the list because it is that old. To earn level cap tomes, Almost every roulette will now give us some. 50, 60, 70 gives 120 uncapped tomes. Leveling roulette, 100 uncapped and 20 capped tomes. Trial roulette gives 60 uncapped and 15 capped. Main scenario, 100 uncapped and 50 capped. Guild Hest never gives any. Alliance raids gives 100 uncapped and 50 capped. Normal raids gives 60 and 20. And then there are two roulettes exclusive to level cap. The first is 80 roulette. This is all of the old level 80 dungeons that are no longer considered current. Unlike 50, 60, 70 roulette, you need all of the dungeons of the roulette to do it. This roulette will fold into 50, 60, 70, 80 roulette when Endwalker comes out with 90 roulettes. But even if you have Amarat, the Twinning, and Academia Anadir all unlocked, or even the Grand Cosmos too, the Roulette will not unlock until you complete them and the other dungeons you are missing in the story. But then there is also Expert Roulette, the single best option for capping your weekly tomes if you are busy for a week and still want to cap. Five Expert Roulettes will cap you out per week with the normal 450 tome cap. Expert, like level 80 dungeons, needs all of the dungeons, but it has an even smaller pool of only two to three dungeons at once. For example, currently, the final two story dungeons are the only two dungeons in Expert Roulette. Like always, there is a tome spender NPC. Our hub for basically all gear is Yomor. Allegory may be uncapped and weaker gear, but it's still item level 490, which is a huge item level boost compared to your starting point. And Revelation is 520. You may also notice that these aren't augmented. You have to work for max item level, unlike Poetics gear coming augmented prematurely. Which, speaking of gearing, now that you are level cap, Materia is worth the investment. It really is. Extract from spirit bonded gear and use all that you get, especially that sweet crit and direct hit. The problem comes in when you want to buy a tome weapon. The vendor only has the shield. Like always, you have to talk to a second vendor for the actual weapons, just like the other tome weapons. The one on the right in this case. The gear exchanges will ask for 10 tokens and one Tome Stone. Back at the Tome Vendor, the other tab has the tokens you need to buy. But what about that Tome Stone? Back in our 8-man raid series, E4, E8, and E12 all drop an extra special item as I mentioned, Blades of Antiquity. You normally need 7 of them, but the number is nerfed to 4 in later patches to get one Tome Stone or just do Savage to get the Tomestone directly. So 4 to 7 clears of the final fight of a tier, and 1,000 Tomes for a weapon. But again, these gear pieces and weapons are 10 levels lower, as they are not augmented. 
the NPC to the left of the tome vendor is the upgrade vendor. These upgrades come from a number of places. The first is Savage. Savage raiders get to up their item levels far earlier than everyone else. But Final Fantasy XIV alternates patches in its cycle. We have the Gear Increase patch and the Catch-Up patch. When the Catch-Up patch hits, two more places will gain access to the items needed for Tome Gear upgrades. The first is Hunts, and they are expensive upgrades. Thousands of currency per gear piece. However, weapons cannot be upgraded this way. Even if you wait until the absolute end of the expansion, you just won't upgrade the weapon with hunt currency. But secondly we have the 24 man raids. Each raid drops a coin upon completion, and each raid has a different coin. So the later in the expansion it gets, the harder it is to buy upgrades. However, this method does eventually allow for weapon augmentation, but often the weapon upgrade isn't until a later patch, but at least you can buy the weapon upgrades. Also remember, you can buy crafted materials with tombstones as well. But also, if you have come into a small fortune, you can skip most of the grind. You can buy crafted gear every tier. It's never the best gear, but it's very high item level, but very expensive and not something I recommend buying every single item level increase. A full set will cost me somewhere from 1 to 2 million gil, and this is months and months after patch 5.4 first introduced this specific set of gear, so it could be a huge gil sink for you too. But also, you can augment these two after the catch-up patch comes out. This is a bit of a confusing menu. You need to buy the material with tomes from the vendor. The one coding costing 100 tomes is the current one. The ones for 50 tomes are the old gear sets. And you trade in the crafted gear to the vendor for a bunch of tickets. Don't bother with the no quality stuff. No quality is trash like I've always told you. Only do high quality gear. A high quality chess piece will always give enough tickets to buy the augmented version. You still need to spend uncapped tomes for the upgrade materials though. This is technically a better option in terms of tome costs, but it comes with a hefty gill cost. But this way, you're buying your way to the same item level as the unaugmented capped tomes. Or just do the normal raids and alliance raids for this item level too. Now, let me talk about what the gear we'll have at launch of Endwalker is like. Day 1 of Shadowbringers, our uncapped tome gear was Ronkin gear. You can now buy this for Nuts and the Crystarium. It's item level 440, which is much lower than the 470 maximum eye level 5.0 and 5.1 had. We had the capped Phantasmagoria for the 460 into 470 gear. But day one, we couldn't really do that yet. Next we had Extreme Trials. Titania and Innocence Extreme. The Innocence drops and tomes were for accessories. The Titania one was weapons, both of item level 450. So launch week your max item level was essentially 446 or so. Then once the raids came out, we started to really gear up. Okay, let me summarize as best I can because that was a lot of stuff. Progress to the end of the story and unlock all dungeons to get the level cap roulettes. These are your best bet for farming max level tomes. And now I'm going to leave you with a bunch of charts with all the item levels of gear. Endwalker will follow a similar or the exact same pattern with different points with stuff like how the relic progresses or other unique content the expansion gives us. It's also prudent to note that both Nier and Eden also have weekly caps. You can only get one drop per week per fight. And Savage works a little bit differently.
But then here we are. The end. I hope this sticks in your mind and was helpful for you in your Endwalker journey. But for now, you're done with the Shadowbringers adventure. At least for this series. What is it, Alize? But don't be sad. Your next adventure is right around the corner. Thank you very much for watching. I may return for one final episode in Endwalker, but only if there's something special to need it. Do blue quests, read patch notes, and keep up on questing. If you've made it this far, you are prepared for Endwalker. You are prepared for the final days. Take care, and may the power of Anna Nid Hogsley waste to your enemies. And for what is the last time in the series, thank you to my patrons for supporting me. An extra special thanks to Arya Deva, Ayman Al Khatib, Benjamin Hahn, Body Clock, Ethan, Ethan Olson, Evan, Kyle Steinhauser, Lise, Meowfi, Mizella, Scott Stanley, Vala LLC, and Yvonne the Moose. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you for the next project.